Let's get this scrappy Irish chain quilt along going. I have been cutting two and a half inch squares today and I'm gonna take some time in this video to go over the cutting instructions for our scrappy Irish chain scrap along and give you some pattern updates, some pattern new information, as well as just an overview of what to expect as you begin cutting out your scrappy Irish chain fabrics. If you are new to my channel, you might have no idea what I'm talking about, but we are jumping in and busting some of our scraps in the new year using the Scrappy Irish Chain Pattern by Jessie Fincham. This is a free quilt pattern. I have it linked in the description box below. If you have your copy of the pattern already printed out, go ahead and grab it now. If you don't already have it, pause this video and go print it out so that you can take notes on your pattern as we're working through this video because there are some updates that are needed. Before we start talking about the cutting, I want to share just a little bit about scrap storage because that's something I get asked about. I wish I could say I have a fancy, beautiful way of organizing my scraps and it's all perfectly labeled and ready to use, but that is not the case. What I do is I have these bins I purchased from Target. I have nine of them and they all fit underneath my cutting table. And as I am cutting my fabrics, I will just throw my scraps underneath into the color bin that it needs to go into. I only save larger pieces of fabrics. I will save two and a half inch squares if they are already cut to size as well as five inch squares cut to size. But generally my scraps end up being a little bit larger than that. And I typically don't save my stitch and flip corners. I quickly learned that if I saved all of my scraps, that I was going to be inundated with scraps very quickly. So I will donate them, I will give them away, or I will sell them so that they don't quickly take over my sewing room. And that's what I do. It's nothing fancy, but it keeps things manageable for me and I can easily find the color scrap that I am looking for. Let me set this bin down and I'm going to pull the pattern over and we're just going to do our little walkthrough of the pattern. It is always a great idea to read through the pattern completely before you begin cutting. That way, if you wanna make any changes to the cutting instructions, or maybe you're using a different technique for piecing your pieces that's different than what the pattern writer intended originally, you might be cutting something a little bit differently. So read through the pattern, make sure you understand everything before you start cutting. Let's just go ahead and do that. We are going to start with um, the white fabric right here. Now, this is the two and a half inch, two and a half yards of white fabric that you'll see in the fabric requirements. And from that white fabric, you are going to cut these five sizes that I bracketed here on my pattern. This last piece, the 10, two and a half inch by with the fabric strips, those are actually your binding strips and are not cut from your white fabric. They are actually cut from the three quarter yard of binding fabric that you see listed in the fabric requirements. So make note of that. The second thing to make note of in this section right here is that these 24 six and a half by six and a half inch pieces, those should be listed as two and a half by six and a half inch pieces. So go ahead and get your pen and mark those out. You need 24 two and a half by six and a half, not six and a half inch square pieces. Now, I have put together a white background cutting guide that I will have available for you to download over on my blog. It looks like this. I like to have a plan when I am cutting large pieces of fabric. I prefer to cut strips and then subcut into smaller pieces. So this was the diagram that I used to cut all of my pieces, starting with the largest pieces and then working my way up to the smallest pieces. This allows for 40 inches with the fabric and then your two and a half inch yardage. And so you can print this out and easily see how I cut my strips and then subcut those into the pieces that we needed. I will have that linked below, just as I said. Let me get back to this page here and we will keep going down through. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the scrap fabrics 
989 two and a half inch squares. So I am just pulling those fabrics from my scrap bins and cutting those down to size as I go. I am using eight different colors. I had mentioned this previously that I was using eight colors, but I changed one of the colors from purple to white background with colorful bits. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm calling that. I don't have enough purple to utilize it like I would like to. So I'm swapping out purple for this sort of fabric choice here. And then red, pink, and orange, yellow, green, aqua, and light gray are my eight colors. And the reason I wanted to know how many colors I was using is so that I know about how many squares I need from each color. Using eight different colors, I am going to need about 125 of each color. So you might want to sit down and think about that a little bit for yourself. If you're using three different colors, you're going to need about well, about a thousand divided by three, <laughs> about about 333 of each of three colors. Um, and you can divide it out accordingly for how many colors you are using. And that just helps you plan so that your colors are evenly balanced throughout your quilt and you don't end up with a predominantly red quilt with just a little bit of blue and green sprinkled throughout unless that's what you want. I like to have my colors pretty evenly planned, and so that's one way to go about planning how many different squares you'll need of each color. I guess I'm just gonna go right into the pre-cut information. If you don't have a nice stash selection of scraps, you might be needing to purchase fabrics for this quilt along. And if you're doing that, here is the information for how many different pre-cuts you're going to need. You can pause this and screenshot it, but I am going to go ahead and list this down below in the description box here, as well as over on my blog. So if you need to purchase pre-cuts, you have that information easily available. If you're doing jelly rolls, you're going to need two jelly rolls. If you're doing layer cakes, you would also need two layer cakes if you can get 16 squares from each of those 10 inch squares, that would be four squares across by four squares up, which uses the full 10 inch width and both horizontally and vertically. If you cannot get 16 squares out of your layer cake, you should be able to, but if you cannot, you would need to purchase three layer cakes. Seven charm packs, again, that is using the whole charm pack, 25 mini charm packs, that would be fun to buy, <laughs> 25 different mini charm packs. If you wanted to do fat quarters, you would need 18 fat quarters. If you wanted to do fat eights, you would need 42 fat eights. Now, let's go ahead and talk about your pink fabric. Let's flip this back over. So the pink fabric is your contrasting fabric here that borders out your scrappy prints. I am using gray in place of the pink. This color is Moda Bella Solid in the color Etchings Charcoal. And I also strip cut those and then subcut the squares. To do that, you would need 19 strips. 19 strips at two and a half inches by width of fabric, and then you can subcut your 300 two and a half inch squares out of those strips. And as we continue on, there are two more updates that you would wanna to make to your pattern. In step number one, under block assembly, these two quantities are actually switched. You are going to need 12 of your contrast fabric and four of your white fabric. So make a note of that. And then in step two, you are going to need 65 two and a half inch scrap squares for block A rather than the 66 that's listed. The other thing that I did, knowing that I needed 65 print squares for block A, using eight different colors means that within each block A, I am going to need about eight of each color. And that is helpful to know as well so that I know not to pull too many reds, not to pull too many blues, um, and to keep my colors nicely consistent throughout the block. So that might be something that you wanna do as well. If you're using three different colors, you're going to need about, goodness, put me on the spot, 22, 22 different squares to do um, a block with three different colors in it. Um, 
And so that just helps you plan a little bit. You're probably noticing I like to have a nice planned approach to my scrappy quilts. I'm definitely a scrappy planned person, um, but really it just helps you know how to have nice balance throughout the entirety of your quilt. The other thing, as I was cutting my fabrics, um, I'm using this for my white background fabrics. This is a print from Beautiful Day, and you will see that we have some very nice big pieces we are using in our blocks. They are 18 inch finished blocks. So the block B is the piece, the, the block that uses this piece. And it allows for some really pretty fabrics to be used in that area. I was thinking if you wanted to, the way this pattern is, there's a lot of this white space. And I know some people don't like as much white space. This would be a really pretty spot to use a large, colorful, maybe floral, focal fabric. And then instead of using a color for these pink bits, the contrast here, use white for those and then use your scrappy prints here based on the colors that are in your focal fabric. That would be a really pretty way to use a larger scale floral focal fabric that you might not want to cut down into smaller pieces. And I think that would be a really interesting twist on this quilt. So just something to think about if you haven't started planning your background fabric yet, or maybe you didn't even know you were going to be participating in this scrap along and it just showed up in your feed today. Um, I think that'd be a really neat alternative to the white background fabric here. I also wanted to mention this specific fabric from Beautiful Day is a harder one to find right now. Um, it sold out pretty quickly when Beautiful Day came out, but in my Buttercup and Slate line of fabric, there is a somewhat similar print. It has the white background with little sketchy flowers across it that would also work beautifully as a background. If you kind of like the way this sort of sketchy background adds to the white, to, to using just a solid white. I think those are the things I wanted to touch on just to get you a great start to cutting this quilt out. In the next video, I am going to walk you through the piecing of both the A block and the B block. I haven't made my test blocks yet, but I might be changing the pressing instructions just a little bit. I wanna test it out to be sure. And that's another great tip. Before you start making all of the blocks for a quilt, it's a great idea to make a test block so that you can double check that everything is fitting how it should and that you are happy with your pressing. So once I get my test block done, I will put together the next video, show you how to construct the blocks, how to press the blocks, and then, we're gonna be well on our way to busting our scraps in 2023. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you again next time.